Hi everyone, I'm Liz Kohler-Brown. I'm an artist, designer, and teacher. And today I wanna to show you a super quick and easy way to create ribbon lettering in Procreate. I'm also gonna share my free ribbon lettering brushes and workbook with you. So let's jump in and create some ribbon lettering. You can pick up the brushes and this ribbon lettering workbook on the link under this video. And you'll see that there's a palette in here and there are step-by-step -step letters for each and every letter of the alphabet, capital and lowercase. I'm using the free app Adobe Reader here. So if you wanna use that one, I think that's the easiest. If you flip through this workbook, you'll see each letter. And then at the end, you'll see just an example composition that I did in case you want to follow along using that image. I want to point out that this is one of the lettering styles from my book, The Letter Styles Library, where you can get a ton more lettering styles like this with the, all the brushes and step-by-step -step style sheets and example illustrations. So if you like this, check out the book. I'll put a link on the blog post. So let's jump in and create some ribbon lettering. So if you look at the quotes and phrases page of the workbook, you'll see that I've structured it from smallest to largest. I recommend you start with smallest in the beginning, just while you're getting to know ribbon lettering and then maybe work to the more difficult ones later on. So I'm gonna create a new document that's 3000 by 3000 pixels. And I'm just gonna sketch my word, which is going to be winter. So now I know the basic layout. I can reduce the opacity of that, create a new layer. And then I just like to draw some guides by just creating a straight line by holding, duplicate that, and duplicate it again for the upper boundary. So now I can create a new layer and I do each and every one of these on a different layer. And let's get a different color so it's really easy to see. I'm gonna grab a green and then I'll do a more refined sketch of this. I also wanna do something fun with at least one of these letters. So I'm gonna take this W, wrap it around the T, and then bring it back up. So for now, I'm just kinda of doing a rough sketch. That's how I always start out, and then we'll refine later. So I'm gonna select everything, make it smaller, because I can see that I'm running out of room. Reduce the opacity of that new sketch, create another one and refine. So I do this over and over where I create a sketch, reduce the opacity and refine. So that's part of my process. You can try that out if you aren't sure how to kind of refine your letters over time. Also, I'm gonna do the actions menu, canvas, turn on the drawing guide, edit drawing guide, and just tilt that drawing guide so that I'm keeping an even slant with all of my letters. So I'm gonna continue that process until I feel like this is a nice even sketch. And I do cover the whole steps for this in my class on script. So if you want a more detailed look at how to create beautiful script, then check out that class. One note here, I try to always keep everything really fluid with this ribbon lettering, obviously because fabric is fluid. So I try not to do like a straight T, for example, I would rather do a curved T. So that's just something I'm kind of working out as I draw each of these letters. I'm just making sure I don't have anything too angular and keeping it really loose. So I'm happy with this final sketch. So I'm going to just delete all those other sketch layers so I don't get confused. 
Reduce the opacity of that, create a new layer, grab a different color, and go to the ribbon script set. Again, you can download this using the link under this video. And the ribbon brush is the second one in the set. What you'll notice about this is as you go up and down, it overlaps just like a ribbon would. If you go across, it's just a straight line. So ideally you won't do any lines where you're just going like that. Instead, you would kind of loop around. So just something to think about as you create these compositions. And I'm just gonna go through and sometimes I might take a couple tries if I don't like how a curve ends up. But typically I just let this be kind of loose and fluid because you really wouldn't see like straight lines or even perfection in ribbon lettering. You would just see kind of loose fluid lines. So I'm trying to capture that here. So you can see how this line is kind of tricky because it almost goes horizontal for a minute. So I might play with that shape to try to make it a little less horizontal in that area. So I'm happy with how that looks. I'll make my sketch invisible so I can just see the ribbon. Reduce the opacity of that, create a new layer, grab a dark color and get that fluid ink brush in the brush set. And then I'm just going to go through and ink this whole shape. So I kind of show a different way to do it in the workbook where you just do the dark sides and then you do the light, light sides. You may want to try both ways and see what you like better. Right now, this is the way I'm doing it, but I change my mind all the time. So ask me next week and I'm probably going to be doing it differently. You can just decide how you want to end your ribbons. It doesn't have to be this little V. You could just do a flat version. Just go with whatever works for your style here. But I'm really just following these lines that the ribbon created, and I'm not doing anything other than just tracing those. So once you finish inking, you can move that sketch to the top and I like to make it a really dark color. So I'm just going to turn it black here so it's really easy to see. And then I need to go through and fill in the dark sides of my ribbon. So I'm going to create a new layer above that ribbon, turn that into a clipping mask and get a color that's slightly darker than my original ribbon. And I just go through and decide where the light and dark sides are gonna be. And then you wanna slice that as if it's curving in. So here's another example. So this is the outer light side and this is the inner. So they're kind of meeting like this. So I need to slice it right here so it's clear that the dark is coming up behind here. And then I can just fill all of those dark sides in, still using that fluid ink brush. And I'm just going to repeat that same process on all of the areas that I decide are dark sides. So there's no right or wrong here for which sides are your dark and light sides you can just decide as you go through your letters. So now that I've done all of the dark sides, let's make all of this extra stuff invisible. So the thickening sketch, the guidelines, turn off the drawing guide. So now we just have some nice ribbon lettering with the dark and light sides. One thing I like to do here is cut the dark side out of the light side so that we don't have any overlap. So I'll show you what I mean here. So if you turn off that clipping mask, we've basically got like extra ink 
that we obviously don't want to see, so we've clipped it. But now I want to do a clipping mask on this dark side, so I need to get rid of all that extra stuff. So I think the easiest way to do this is tap on your selection tool and make sure your color fill is not on. Once that's off, you can tap on that letter layer, tap select, tap on your dark sides layer, drag three fingers down, cut and paste. So what that does is it cuts all of that extra stuff that we don't need out and we can just delete it. And then we're left with this nice crisp layer on its own that is our dark sides. Above that dark side layer, I'm gonna make a clipping mask, get a color that's even darker than that color I'm using here, get the gritty shading brush, and just go through and add in some nice dark areas wherever this light to dark transition happens. So anytime there's gonna be a shadow from the ribbons overlapping, I'm just gonna pop that in. The last thing I'd like to do is add in some color, obviously. And again, you'll see that there is a color palette in the workbook. So if you wanna use that palette, one easy way to do that would just be to screenshot it by pressing the home button and the volume up button at the same time. Then you can bring it into your Procreate document, put that at the very top. And what I like to do is just kind of crop it out so that I can have it over here on the side while I play with color. So I'll create a background. So that will be just any solid color to start out. And then you can tap select, turn on color fill, tap on any layer and tap select. And then you can just start tapping and holding on different colors to play around with how those will look in a composition. One last thing you may wanna do as well is go on the lighter areas and get a color that's slightly lighter than your original color. And just on a clipping mask layer, add just a little bit of lightening. So what that does is just make that lighter area pop a little bit. So I've repeated that process on several different compositions and I just want to show you how much color can really change the composition. So here's blue, here's a nice red orangey version, here's gold and pink. This is probably my favorite version because that gold just really shimmers red and so all of these are palettes from the color palette sheet that I provided you so feel free to use those. Remember that I cover this and a lot more fun letter styles in my book on letter styles called the Letter Styles Library so check that out on Amazon if you liked this tutorial. If you use this tutorial to make something, please share it with me. I would absolutely love to see your ribbon lettering. You can tag me at Liz Kohler Brown and find more downloads for iPad artists and designers on my website. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.